Hey everybody, this is Dr. Nick with the Springfield Wellness Center. Uh, today I'm going to be talking to you about carpal tunnel syndrome, uh, what it is, uh, how do you know if you have it, and then also what do we do in our office. And we have a few different treatments that we'll talk about today. So first, what is carpal tunnel syndrome? So everyone knows that it's obviously in your wrist uh, and that it causes pain or numbness down into your hand. So basically how it works is the median nerve, which is a compilation of the nerves that are at the base of your spine, so it's C5, 6, 7, 8, and then T1, the very top thoracic nerve. Those all come out of your spine and they form one nerve called the median nerve. That nerve runs down through your shoulder, down into your uh, elbow, and then down through your wrist, and it actually innervates your thumb, your, uh, your pointer finger, your middle finger, and then the inside of your ring finger. So if you have carpal tunnel, that's how we know if you have it or not. If um, uh, if you're getting numbness down into those parts of the hand. So the problem is, is that when people come in with it, they're thinking that, oh, well, it has to be carpal tunnel. Well, it can be actually pinched anywhere along the, the route of that nerve. So yeah, if it's being pinched in your, in your wrist, then we want to address that and that would be considered carpal tunnel syndrome. If it's coming from, say, your neck or your shoulder or your elbow, that's something that we have to consider as well. And there's also a syndrome called double crush syndrome where, yes, you may be having some irritation at your wrist, but you might also have be having some irritation at your shoulder or your neck also. So each one of those by themselves not, may not be enough to cause any symptoms, but together um, those create the symptoms at the end of the nerve, which is your hand. Uh, so there's a couple of uh, things that we do in the office uh, to make sure that we're addressing uh, the carpal tunnel if that's what it is. We would do an exam to determine if that's where it's coming from. And then the reason why the median nerve gets pressed in the tunnel is because it's a small space. So there's a lot of things that can create um, a lack of space within that tunnel. So the tunnel is basically just the space, the, uh, the median nerve, and then the uh, finger flexors, uh, the tendons run through. So there are bones uh, that make up your wrist. So there's eight small bones that are uh, in two rows of four. And then there's a tendon that runs over the top of the uh, carpal tunnel. So if those bones are pushing into the, the tunnel or if that ligament gets tight or if there's any kind of inflammation in there, uh, that's gonna create pressure on the nerve and then when the, uh, the nerve gets pressed, that's when you feel the symptoms. So the things that we look at are how are the muscles, uh, ligaments, and joints doing? And then how can we address any kind of inflammation? So we'll talk a little bit more about those treatments now. So what we do first with our patients with carpal tunnel is once we've assessed and determined that it is carpal tunnel, we're gonna look at the wrist and see if there are any structures that are impeding on the space that the median nerve runs through. So the first thing that we look at is going to be the uh, wrist carpal bones. So the carpal bones are two rows of four bones that connect the arm and the hand, and that's what allows you all the motion in your wrist. So if, uh, if any of these bones move into the space of the carpal tunnel, it can put pressure on the nerve. So the nerve runs very close to the, uh, to the skin, and then there's the tendon that runs over it. So if that bone starts to push uh, the nerve up into the tendon, then that can create uh, the irritation and the symptoms. So what we're looking for is any kind of dysfunction in the wrist, and I'll put, them, uh, I'll put the patient through a range of motion with their wrist, see if there are any areas that feel restricted or out of place. If I do find something, we're going to thrust into the wrist. Brooks doesn't have any dysfunction in her wrist, so we're not gonna do the adjustment, but I would basically do an adjustment to try to push that carpal bone back out of the, uh, the space that the carpal tunnel, uh, or I'm sorry, that the median nerve runs through. So if I don't find any dysfunction in the carpal bones, then I'll be looking at the soft tissue. We'll look at the, uh, the wrist uh, flexors. So that's the muscles that bring your hand uh, up like this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take them through the range of motion opposite to that and drag along and we would use some biofreeze and really work on the muscles here so that there's no adhesions or irritation on the nerve as it enters into the wrist. We'll also work on the, uh, the ligament to make sure that that is uh, loose and not impinging as well. So there's some exercises that I tell every patient uh, that does have carpal tunnel to be making sure that they do. Uh, I want them doing this three times a day, uh, 10 reps uh, each time that you do it. So it would be morning, uh, lunch, and evening when you do that. So basically what I want you to do is just bring your hands out uh, front like this. Then you're gonna bring them up like you're uh, doing a stop sign. You're gonna hold that for five seconds. Then you're gonna bring them back to neutral. Make a fist. 
hold back for five seconds, and then you're gonna bring them, flex them down, and you're gonna hold that for five seconds. And so we're gonna rotate through those three exercises 10 times, three times a day. Um, and that'll help to strengthen and to stretch. Another treatment we use in the office to help uh, combat carpal tunnel syndrome is our carpal track attachment on our decompression table. So our decompression table, we normally use this for uh, lumbar discs and cervical disc problems. Uh, but with the carpal track attachment, we're actually able to address the, the wrist and the carpal tunnel. So what we do, uh, we secure it in Brooks' elbow uh, here at the base, and then we put on our uh, wrist attachment, and we connect it to the traction machine. So we're pulling at about 30 pounds of force, and it just feels like a really gentle pull, and then it relaxes and pulls and relaxes. And so that lasts for about 15 minutes. Uh, we normally have patients come in uh, three times a week for the first couple of weeks to see if we're getting any uh, kind of relief with their symptoms, and then we start to back them, them off from there. Uh, so this is, again, a great way to, uh, to combat the carpal tunnel syndrome. So another treatment that we use here in the office for carpal tunnel syndrome is a deep tissue cold laser. So the deep tissue laser uh, works really well with, especially with small joint and to decrease inflammation. So the whole point is to try to help the healing of the area and to decrease the inflammation that's in there in a natural way. So this works by using light that actually penetrates to the cellular level, that's a hard word to say, uh, but it stimulates healing at that level which is a lot stronger and a lot more likely to happen than say something like ultrasound which is just trying to heat up the tissue and trying to heal that way. Um, so what we'd be doing with Brooke is we'd be doing this about three times a week uh, for the first couple of weeks, then dropping down to a couple times a week, then down to once a week, and we'd just be seeing how things went. So this is a great uh, uh, piece of equipment to be using really for any reason that you might be having carpal tunnel, um, but especially if it's a mechanical reason and uh, there's inflammation in there because the joints aren't moving right or there is soft tissue um, that's not um, supporting the, the wrist the way it's supposed to. So the way this would work is I would uh, put the, the ball of it onto, uh, onto her wrist and then we just constantly keep it moving. Since it's a, such a small joint, this really only takes a couple of minutes to be able to work and we're just kind of painting the area. Probably do the back just to make sure we're hitting every part of it uh, from all angles. And we do this for about three to five minutes uh, depending on the size of the wrist. And, uh, and that's a really effective way to be decreasing inflammation here in the office. Some things you can do to decrease inflammation at home is ice, ice, and more ice. So doing 10 minutes on, 10 minutes off, uh, doing at least once an hour if you're dealing with the symptoms on a pretty consistent basis. Um, the one trick that I tell people that can help the, the cold get in deeper is to put a damp cloth in between your skin and whatever you're holding the ice in. So that'll help uh, to decrease that inflammation a little bit quicker. Right. So millions of people every year suffer with carpal tunnel syndrome. It's one of those uh, problems that people either don't know a lot about or think that there's nothing they can do about it other than surgery. So surgery is a very permanent solution. Uh, what we've shown today are some natural ways that you'd be able to uh, treat carpal tunnel before you have surgery. Uh, surgery is always there as a last option, but this is definitely what you should try first. Uh, if you found some value in this video, uh, like it or share it with a friend that may be suffering from carpal tunnel syndrome. Thanks a lot. To find out more about the Springfield Wellness Center and all the other services we offer, head over to our Facebook page or check out our YouTube channel.